Please welcome the 12th Doctor, a hero for a whole new generation. It's... Peter Capaldi! safe to say they like you. Um, <laughs> Peter, congratulations. Thank Your you first much. official appearance as the 12th Doctor. Uh, how relieved are you? It's so wonderful not to keep this secret any longer, <laughs> but it has been absolutely fantastic in, yeah. it, in its own way. I've, so many wonderful things have happened. For instance, um, uh, for a while I couldn't tell my daughter who would be looking on the internet and discovering that people were saying so-and-so should be Doctor Who and so-and-so should be Doctor Who, and she was getting rather upset that they never mentioned me. <laughs> and I said, to her, just rise above it, darling, rise above it. Darling. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. How did you prepare for the audition as the Doctor? The well, it was quite hard because even though I'm a lifelong Doctor Who fan, I haven't really played Doctor Who since I was nine in the playground. <laughs> So as an adult actor, I've never, I've never worked on it. So what I did was I, I downloaded some uh, old um, scripts yeah. uh, from, from the internet and practiced those in front of the mirror. Fantastic. Uh, and, and, but they, but Stephen had already, already written some scenes that uh, uh, referred to a doctor of my ilk. I have your ilk. So, oh, yeah. it's so exciting. I've got really clammy palms. Um, <laughs> over the uh, last couple of, a couple of days, fans in their droves have been sending in questions for you. Kelly from Dundee, even Kelly, says, what were you doing the moment you found out you were going to be the next doctor? Well, <clears throat> I was actually filming in Prague. Mm -hmm. I'm doing uh, the BBC's adaptation of The Three Musketeers over there, playing Cardinal Richelieu. Uh, and uh, I was... Um, I had my phone on silent. So I missed the call. <laughs> and I looked at it and saw a missed call. It was 10 minutes ago and it was uh, my dear agent. And I rang her up and said, it's me. And she said, hello, doctor. Yes. So and I just started to laugh. And oh. I haven't stopped laughing since. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nervous laugh now. Yeah. Um, uh, Nicola from Stevenage wants to know, have you been practicing in front of a mirror saying, hello, I'm the doctor? Because of course you played a spin doctor. Uh, the iconic Malcolm Tucker, yes. a slightly different doctor to uh, this yes. doctor you're going to be playing. Yes, well, I think Malcolm's been banished from the, from the mirror by this new doctor, who certainly would not put up with any of Malcolm's language or attitudes <laughs> uh, uh, to, to the world. Um, I didn't really... Pra I don't say I'm the doctor. I, I'm surprised now to see Doctor Who looking back. Oh. That's what's really strange. You look in the mirror and suddenly, strangely, He's looking back, and, he, and he's not me yet. <gasps> we, he, but he's reaching out, we're, we're, and hopefully we'll, we'll get it together. It is so exciting, because it's still such early days. I mean, you've been in Doctor Who yeah. already. You're in the fires of Pompeii. And we, you said yourself that you've been a fan for a long, long time. So much so that you actually wrote to the Radio Times <laughs> uh, years ago. Have a look at this letter. This is the letter that Peter wrote, a young Peter wrote to the Radio Times in 1988. Uh, what was it? Oh, no, you're right. I hope that in 15 years' time, in 1988, you will publish another special to celebrate 25 years of wandering in time with the Doctor, Peter Capaldi, 15, Glasgow. How cute is that? <laughs> Yes, yeah, I know. I mean, I've, I've, I've hidden that from my wife for about 25 years. It's, and it's the full geek, isn't it? It's the full anorak. You're, you're never going to get a girlfriend with a letter when like that. It, it is that. Well, it just sort of seems now here, then, in the 50th year of the show, here you are, sitting on the hot seat. I mean, do you have a message for all the Doctor Who fans who are watching? Well, I think Doctor Who is an extraordinary show. And, and the thing that strikes me about it is that it's still here after all this time. And the reason that I think that it's still here it's because of the work of all the, the, the writers and the directors and the producers who've worked on the show, the, the work of all um, the actors, and I don't just mean the fabulous actors who've played the Doctor, but also those actors who've sweated inside rubber monster costumes <laughs> and those who had to wear futuristic lurex cat suits. 
But the real reason, the big reason that Doctor Who is still with us is because of every single viewer mm -hmm. who ever turned on to watch this show at any age, at any time in its history and in their history, and who took it into their heart. Because Doctor Who belongs to all of us. Everyone yes. made Doctor right. Who. That's beautiful. Matt Smith has a very special message for you now. Have a look at this. I just want to wish my successor uh, all the best and and, um, uh, and 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 just say good luck and good on you for getting it. And because um, I know he is both a huge fan of the show and and uh, a really n n nice guy. And I think it, the casting of it made me really excited, um, genuinely. And and as a fan, I. I think it's a, a really canny choice. I think it'll be a hit. So, good luck, man. It's going to be a thrill. Oh, that's beautiful. I know, Tatum. So, that is it, Peter. A huge thank you to all our guests uh, and to Matt Smith. You can catch him on the Doctor Who prom on the 26th of August. That's Bank Holiday Monday. So, let's hear it for the newest incarnation of the galaxy's number one hero. He's the 12th Doctor, and the whole of time and space awaits. Huge applause, please, for Peter Capaldi. <laughs>